What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here for another death battle video. Today we'll be talking about vaporization deaths, also known as the lamest way for a loser to go out in the show. Over the past decade of death battle, whether it be something classic and creative like Spider-Man using a web swing to kick through Batman's chest, or something new and brutal like Omni-Man feeding Homelander his own heart, we've come to expect violent and unique Mortal Kombat fatality style finishers in these fights. But sometimes they drop the ball and we just get a giant Hadouken Kamehameha beam that erases everything without a trace. Even when it makes complete sense for a character to finish off a fight like that, it doesn't make it any less boring. However, there are a couple times where it's been pretty neat. So that's what this list is about, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, the vaporization deaths that were actually pretty cool. Now before I get started, I want to mention that incineration and disintegration deaths are also included too. I know those are both different from each other and both different from vaporization, but all three of these things don't have enough entries to make their own lists, so I'm putting them all under the same umbrella. Basically, any finishing blow that doesn't leave a trace of the victim's body is allowed. Except explosion deaths, those actually do have enough for their own list, and not only that, but they also don't always completely destroy the other person, like Sonic's foot in Mario vs Sonic 2. Hopefully this all makes sense. Anyways, let's get started. Number 10 is Dr. Fate to Dr. Strange. Now this isn't exactly a fantastic vaporization death, but it's more just for the entertainment value. Just the way Dr. Strange's limbs disappear one at a time until they get to the last leg, like that was the load-bearing leg apparently. Oh man, he's totally fine losing any other limb but that leg, he just can't lose that one leg, dude. So yeah, it made the list more for being funny rather than being cool, but funny is still good. I shouldn't put it any higher than 10 though, because there is technically still part of him left afterwards. Yeah, it's just an empty husk of ashes in the shape of his body, but it's still something. It's a pretty hard finishing blow to take seriously, but if it contributes to the overall entertainment factor, then can it really be considered a negative? I think it deserves to make it on the list, for all the laughs it gave. Number 9 is King Mickey Diota. Now this one is less about the vaporization death itself, because it's just a bright flash of light, we don't even get to see Yoda in the process of being vaporized, but it's more for the moment around the vaporization death. The build up to this final flash, the incredible music, how fitting and in character it is for King Mickey to vanquish his foes in a blinding burst of light, the fact that Yoda got to stick around as a force ghost after his body was completely erased. It was an oddly comforting finisher if that makes any sense. Like there's no other way King Mickey would destroy his foes, and there's no other way we'd want Yoda to go out. It looked very painless and calm. For most of the season premieres and finales, we're used to the big boys, the cape dudes, the anime protags. Just two heavy hitters wailing on each other. We're not used to this more lighthearted, calm and floaty battle. It was a very feel good ending, and that wouldn't have been possible without the vaporization. Number 8 is Naruto to Ichigo. And this is a pretty good candidate for the standard of vaporization deaths. You're either as good as or better than this one, or you're below average. If you'll notice, the previous two entries on this list had a catch attached to them. Strange Fate relied on the fact that it was entertaining in a funny way rather than being a cool and neat death, and Yoda vs King Mickey relied on everything around the vaporization death rather than the vaporization death itself. But Naruto vs Ichigo is about where the catches stop. While there's nothing super unique or fantastic that you could point out about this vaporization death, there's nothing super bad you could say about it either. The music is fine, the visuals are fine, the voice acting's fine, the moment is pretty cool with Ichigo taking a last stand even though he has no power left, and it's over pretty quickly and doesn't linger for too long. This vaporization death pretty much says this is the only way this fight can end and you just have to deal with it. And I'm cool with that. Number 7 is Star Butterfly to Steven Universe. Now you may be wondering why this is ahead of Naruto to Ichigo, because at first glance this appears to be on a much smaller scale. The attack is tinier, it's over much quicker, there's no planetary shot to show the range of the devastation of this attack, and so on. But just because it's a smaller attack doesn't make it any less powerful. This beam is beefy, and it hits hard, and I put this one over the other one just because of how painful this one looks. There's no beam struggle, there's no Steven pushing back at it with his shields, there's no long drawn out disintegration, he just gets smacked with it and it's over. He wasn't even looking at it, it just snuck up on him from behind. And you can tell that even though he didn't see it coming and it was over no longer than 2 seconds, you just know those last 2 seconds were pure agony. And I know his skin is all pink because he's using his diamond powers, but the visuals of the pink skin really help show off just how burning and intense this beam was. If I were to ever do a top 10 most painful looking death battle deaths, this would definitely be a contender despite its short length. 
Number 6 is Wargreymon to Red and Charizard. And this one's honestly hard to watch, it's just sad. Now, I've never been the biggest fan of Pokemon, but it was still part of my childhood, seeing most of the Diamond and Pearl anime. So I definitely knew what the bond between a Pokemon and its trainer meant, and how powerful it truly was. And seeing them go out like this, in a fiery blast so intense that even the fire-type Pokemon couldn't resist it, burning so intensely that not even a shadow of ashes remain, along with the incredibly somber music that just accompanies the moment, it's just a really depressing finisher, and it's hard to think of any other death battle that feels this way. The fact that Red was clearly the instigator and villain of this battle, and even annoyed me a bit, yet still managed to get these emotions out of me is pretty impressive. I will never not laugh at Ty punching him in the face, though. Number 5 is... The Volcano to Geese Howard. How are you gonna have a vaporization death against someone with no beams or fire powers? Come on, man. But this death is super duper interesting, being the only one I can think of that's done by the environment rather than the other character. I mean, yeah, it's not like he was gonna survive anyways after Heihachi impaled him on spiky rocks that are bigger around than his own head. But the lava is definitely the star of the show as it melts down Geese and his Sans Undertale skeleton into a puddle of nothing. The music petering out to give us a more clear listen to Geese's screams of agony as well just adds to the moment. The only negative I can think of is that the hand-drawn version of Geese looks a bit more like John from Attack on Titan. But that's not to say the hand-drawn segment was bad. It was very detailed, very smooth, lots of disgusting, melty frames. Ugh. While it's not as emotional or impactful as Pokemon vs. Digimon, I think the uniqueness and the gruesomeness of this vaporization death is enough to place it this high on the list. Number 4 is Natsu to Ace. While it's not quite as creative as Geese's death, it does every other aspect a bit better. The impaling is actually done by Natsu's fist instead of some random spiky rock. The more detailed melty animation looks a bit better. And while I'm not a fan of Fairy Tale, it does have some really good music that fits this moment a lot nicer than just the silence in the previous entry. It was a really tough call between whether this one or Geese should be number 4, but I think the slightly higher quality, along with the fact that I can't really think of any negatives to list, is a fair trade for the unique environmental kill. Plus, just imagine how much more hot and painful that one would have to be. It incinerated someone who's literally made of fire. How does that happen? Uh, no really, how? I didn't watch the analysis for this one. Someone tell me. Number 3 is Shadow the Hedgehog to Ryuko, and this is basically Yoda's death, but without the catch. As in, we actually get to see the vaporization, and it's pretty sick. Not only that, but it's also surrounded by tons of other cool aspects. Both of these characters have a serious attitude and edge problem, so seeing Shadow just get fed up and try to end it as quick as possible at the end makes complete sense. Especially with his casual Chaos Blast knowing the annoyance was going to be over then and there. The music was incredible too, the hand-drawn Ryuko getting vaporized, and of course we can't forget that iconic win quote, I'm the coolest. Yoda vs. King Mickey may have been a better fight overall with more accurate portrayals of the characters, but when it comes to the vaporization death itself, few are as flashy or stylish as this one. I have no problem giving it the bronze medal. Number 2 is Iron Man to Lex Luthor. Now despite this still being a very good episode, it doesn't quite hold up to me as well as it does for others. And that does include the climax, as I was disappointed to find out that the playing human line is just repurposed from the comics, and not a cool death battle original they came up with. But everything else about this ending is just as good as it's always been. The music, the visuals, the hype buildup, how in character they are, and of course that vaporization death, where Tony erases Lex Luthor with not only his own power, but all of Lex's too. I like how you can even see Lex getting atomized as each of his particles disappear into the beam. This is to Ryuko's vaporization what Ace is to Geese's incineration. It's not quite as creative or stylish, but everything else from the music to the visuals is ever so slightly better. And I gotta give it credit for making it to number 2 even though it didn't age as well for me as it did for other people. And number 1 is Superman to Goku. It has the pain and intensity of Steven's vaporization, the emotional weight of Red and Charizard's vaporization, the incredible build-up and climax of Lex Luthor's, and the creativity of Geese's. Shattering the Earth and incinerating your opponent with all your built-up sun energy combined with the erupting core? Are you kidding me? It's near impossible to come up with a vaporization death concept better than that one. Not only that, but this is also the oldest vaporization on this list. You'd think with the episode being super old, it would be outdated, or not hold up as well, but it just does. In fact, seeing how they completely nailed it this early on makes it even better. 
So far, Season 9 of Death Battle has been very creative with its finishers. I don't think we've even had a single vaporization death yet. I'd be shocked if they went the whole season. But eventually when we do get one, let's see if it's creative enough to defeat the reigning champ. But let me know what you guys think. What's your favorite vaporization death? And which one do you think is the lamest? Mine would be Iron Fist. He kind of just turns into confetti when Poe touches him. But I'll be sure to read all your answers too in the comment section below. I'll see you guys next time. Leopold the Brave, out.